Welcome to SAT Prep Thursday. Today, we're doing College Board SAT Practice Test Number 1, Part 4, Number 1 through 19. This is a calculator-approved section, so I will be using either a TI-30XS or a TI-30XA. Also, there is a file link in the description for this practice test. John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing, then strictly decreasing? So all I care about is seeing the increase, then the decrease. No other changes. It's just this window. Not even this increasing again, because it's a strictly increase, then strictly decrease. So we're looking at going from 40 to 60, which means B is the answer. If Y is equal to KX, where K is constant and Y is 24, when X is six, what is the value of Y when X is five? Let's just go ahead and figure out what K is first, when we know that 24 is equal to K times 6, which means that K is 4. So, when X is equal to 5, I'm looking at Y is equal to 4 times 5, which is 20, and C is the answer. In the figure above, lines L and M are parallel. So it's always nice to go ahead and give yourself those visual markers of putting in those triangles. And S and T are parallel, so I will put in those markers as well. If the measure of angle one is 35 degrees, let's write 35 degrees in there. What is the measure of angle two? So it's important to keep track of this angle one. It's also the angle directly across from it. Also the angle directly across from it. And also the angle directly across, meaning this one is 35 degrees. Knowing that angle one plus angle two is equal to 180, I can say 35 degrees plus angle two would be equal to 180. So, Angle 2 would be equal to 180 minus 35, which is 145. D is the answer. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? So the key here is we have to take this whole thing and translate it into an algebraic expression, knowing that is means equals, more than means plus. This gives me 16 plus 4x is equal to 14 plus 10. Now 14 plus 10 is 24 simply. So I subtract 16 from both sides, giving me 4x is equal to eight, or x is equal to two. Now, it wants to know what is eight times x. It's giving us an additional step. So eight times two is 16 and C is the answer. Which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? Now, D is the X value and T is the Y value. When I look at this graph A here, this is no correlation that I can see. When I look at this graph, I'm seeing a zero slope, which is not a negative co correlation. Looking at C, this is moving up, which means positive correlation. D is moving down, which means negative correlation. So D is the answer. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one two decagram container? Well, one of the things I'm looking at is it would be nice if these two had the same measure. So I'm gonna multiply this bottom by 10, meaning I'm gonna get that 10 grams on the right side and a thousand milligrams will give me 10,000 milligrams. This means that one decagram would be equal to 10,000 milligrams. So if I multiplied that by two because they're asking about a two decagram container, then I'm gonna wind up with 20,000. So D is the answer.
The number of rooftops with solar panels installed in five cities is shown in the graph. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is the approximate label for the vertical axis of the graph? Now, we know that we have five cities, and this is city one, two, three, four, and five. And we're asking about panel installations. We're also trying to figure out what is the vertical axis. That's this right here going up. So if this is cities, then this is the number of installations. But how are we measuring these? Well, since these are single digits and we're talking about 27.5 thousands, we're looking at the number of installations, simple, in the thousands. So C is the answer. For what value of n is the absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0? This means I can say n minus 1, that absolute value, plus 1 equals 0, and try and solve this. Now, this is going to give me the absolute value of n minus 1 is equal to negative 1. Now, at this point, we have a little bit pro of a problem because the absolute value of a number must be greater than or equal to 0. So it must be positive. There is no way I can solve this to get this negative answer, so there is no value for n. For no, this problem, we're going to be using this equation here. The speed of sound wave or air depends on the air temperature. The formula shown shows the relationship between A and the speed of the sound wave in feet per second and T, the air temperature, in degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use this for both 9 and 10. Which of the following expresses the air temperature in terms of speed of the sound wave? So if I start with this equation that we know, that is A is equal to 1052 plus 1.08T. And what we're trying to do is solve for T. So A minus 1052 is equal to 1.08T. And if I divide everything by 1.08, I get A minus 1052 divided by 1.08 is T. A is your answer. At which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound wave be closest to 1,000 feet per second? So the thing is, we can use this equation right here by putting 1,000 in for A and then figuring out what T is. If we had done number 9 correctly, then we have A minus 1052 divided by 108, which means really all I have to do is say 1,000 minus 1052 divided by 1.08 is equal to t. And at this point, you put it into your calculator and get a negative 0.48 degrees Fahrenheit. Which of the following numbers is not a solution to the inequality 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4x minus 3? So just dealing with this inequality, if I move 3x to the other side, change its sign, I wind up with an x all by itself. Move 3 to the other side, change its sign, I wind up with negative 2 is greater than or equal to x. Now, I prefer to always write this stuff with the x on the left, giving me x is less than or equal to negative 2. Looking at a number line, at the negative 2, I have a solid dot and an arrow pointing to the left. Now, when it comes to figuring out if something is an answer, negative 1, we have a negative 2, we have a negative 3, and a negative 5. The negative 2, negative 3, and negative 5 all appear in what would be the shaded region, but the negative 1 does not, so A is the answer. Based on this histogram above, of the following, which is the closest to the average, the arithmetic mean number of seeds per apple? So what we're considering here is a simple fraction, really. We want to know the total number of seeds and divide that by the number of apple. This is going to give us 3 times 2 plus 5 times 4 plus 6 times 1 plus 7 times 3, sorry, 7 times 2, plus 9 times 3. 
all divided by 2 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. So we're really going to wind up with a 6 plus 20 plus 6 plus 14 plus 27 over 12, which is 73 over 12. Using that calculator, we're going to wind up with 6.08. Now you can't have 0 0.08, so we wind up going with just that number 6. C is the answer. A group of 10th grade students responded to a survey that asks which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data were broken down as shown in the table above. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of the survey response? So one of the things we know is that the total response was 310. We also know that we're after 19%. So what we're really trying to figure out is a percent is equal to what we have divided by what is the total times 100. So we can set this equation up to be 19 is equal to X, the number we're after, divided by 310, our total, times 100. This means that I'm looking at 19 times 310 divided by 100 is equal to X. When we do this, we're going to get that X is 58.9. 58.9 is awful close to 59, which I can see is males in geometry. So C is the answer. The table above lists the lengths to the nearest inch of random samples of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measure of 24 inches is an error. Of the mean, median, and range of the values listed, which will change the most if the 24-inch measurement is removed from the data? So if I removed just this one number, now the average, will it'll change some, and the median might change, but there's a whole bunch of 12s right there in the middle, which makes me feel like it won't change. But the range would have gone from 24 minus 8 is 16. Everything that's going on is somewhere between 8 and 16. So it seems that the range would have the largest amount of change. For questions 15 and 16, we're gonna to refer to this graph. It displays the total cost C in dollars of renting a boat for H hours. What does C intercept represent on the graph? The C intercept, we're looking at this point right here. So this represents the total cost in dollars. Now this is the starting point when X would be zero or H would be zero. So it's gonna be the initial cost of renting a boat where things start. Let's remember that we're gonna to refer to this graph to help us with number 16. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? What we're considering here is the equation y is equal to mx plus b, because I can see on this line that what we have is a graph. I can also see that b, its starting point, is 5. So y is equal to c, but I need to figure out what m is. So if I just use two points, like I go from here to here, I can see a rise and a run. I can see that it has a rise of three and a run of four. So M is three over four. But that's if I'm counting these lines right here. If I now ignore the lines and just look at the numbers, what I can see is that it went from 1 to 2. So in fact, the slope is simply 3 over 1 or 3. So when I know that Y is C and that B is 5, and now I know that M is 3, Y is equal to 3X, sorry, that is a C is equal to 3X plus five, but it's not X, it is H. This gives me C is the answer. The complete graph of the function F is shown in the XY plane above. For what value of X is the value of F of X at its minimum? 
So at the absolute lowest point, which we can find right here. So negative one, negative two, and negative three, B is the answer. In the XY plane, if zero, zero is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between A and B must be true? So if I start by looking at one of these equations, y is less than negative x plus a, and I say at zero, zero, which means zero is less than a, I know that I have a zero on the line, a is over here on the right, and b is possibly over here on the left. Yes, it is on the left, because if we look here, zero, zero would give us zero is greater than b. So we have a b, a zero, and an a. So what we do know is that b is less than a. We also know that a is greater than b, which means that a is the answer. A food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks in one day was $836.50. How many salads were sold that day? We get to know that salads are $6.50, drinks are $2.00. We know that S plus D, the salads and drinks, totaled at 209. Now, to these values that we know, this is $6.50 per salad plus $2 per drink gave us a total of $836.50. This means, this top equation, that D is equal to 209 minus S. I can substitute this D value into the second equation, giving me 6.5S plus 2 times 209 minus S is equal to 836.5. Distributing this is going to give me 418 minus 2S, which means I can combine some like terms to say 6.5S minus two is gonna give me 4.5s. Move 418 to the other side, changing its sign, so subtracting it from 836.5 is gonna give me 418.5. Divide both sides by 4.5 means that S is equal to 93. 93 is B, so there's the answer.